We can represent atoms with a simple model developed by Niels Bohr in 1913. It shows the nucleus surrounded by electrons in fixed shells or orbits that are a certain energy distance away from the nucleus. The electrons must have quantized energy, so they have set amounts of energy, giving them a certain very set value, and it does not vary. We refer to these energy levels as n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3. We fill one orbital at a time, starting at the center and working out. This works for about the first 20 elements. If we do 19 and 20, we would draw an additional energy level that is n equals 4. When we fill our orbitals, the n equals 1, we can fill to a maximum of two electrons. So you can have one or two electrons in the first energy level. In the second, n equals 2, there's a maximum of eight electrons that we can put into that orbital. n equals 3 is another eight electrons that we can add. So it is always follows this pattern of 2, 8, 8 for maximum amounts of electrons to include in the orbitals. If we go to n equals 4, we can put an additional 2 electrons. So what neutral element does this model represent? We have 2 plus 8 plus 8 electrons. So this gives us a total of 18 electrons. If it is neutral, that means that we have to have 18 protons. So this would be argon. The nucleus is very small and dense in the center of the atom. The orbitals around it are fairly large. So this results in most of the atom, because electrons are so tiny, being empty space. It is so much space in the atom that is empty that if we actually removed all the empty space from all the people in the entire world, we could fit them inside the volume of a sugar cube. That's how much empty space there is in our atoms. Think about if we had electrons and they were just slightly more negative than the proton was positive, what would happen? How would matter behave? Well, if they were a little more negative, our atoms would repel each other and no matter would stick together and the universe as we know it would not exist. So even very small changes on the atomic scale have very large consequences in the macroscopic world that we know. Complete the following table for our Bohr model of the atom. So for chlorine, which has a zero charge, we're going to have a total of 17 electrons. The first energy level holds two. The second energy level holds eight. So that gives us a total of 10. We're trying to get to 17. So seven electrons would be in our third energy level. Okay, what if we have two electrons, eight in the second and three in the third? Well, that gives us a total of 13 electrons. If we have a zero charge, this would give us aluminum. Try to do calcium. See if you can put the electrons into the correct energy level. A 
Well, calcium has 20, elect 20 protons. If it has a plus 2, that means we have 2 less electrons, so we have 18 electrons to put into our orbitals. It's always 2 in the first energy level. There is 8 in the second energy level, a maximum that we can put in. And in the third energy level, there would be 8 to give us a total of 18 electrons. Now the Bohr's model is a very early model of an atom. And it works well for the first 20 to help us predict where the electrons are. A more realistic model of the atom has to do with the electron cloud. So this shows the probability of where the electrons are at any given point in time. You'll see that there's still kind of rings that show up in our electron cloud model. And this is more realistic, but a little harder to understand and beyond the scope of our class. We represent atoms in lots of different ways. One way that we can represent them is by the elemental symbol. This is a one or two letter abbreviation of the element's name. Sometimes the, name, the abbreviation makes sense like O for oxygen or C for carbon. And sometimes it's based on an ancient Greek name like gold. Its symbol is AU. We can represent the atomic symbol by using that elemental symbol where you would see the X and it also includes information about the electrons, the protons, and the neutrons. So the Z represents the atomic number, the number of protons, the number that we see on the periodic table in our example. Our Z in our uranium block would be 92. The A represents the mass number, which is the protons plus the neutrons. And the C is the charge of the element, which is protons minus the electrons. The mass number is the sum of our protons and neutrons. The, this has units of atomic mass units, or AMU. This helps us to know what the mass of our atoms are and how heavy they are because protons have one atomic mass unit and neutrons have one atomic mass unit. Let's complete the following atomic symbol. So boron, if we look on the periodic table, has an atomic number of five, which we would put on the lower left hand side of our elemental symbol. The mass number, if we have the number of neutrons is equal to six, our mass number would be the five protons plus the six neutrons to give us a total mass number of 11. If we have number of electrons equal to five, we take our protons minus our electrons in order to find the charge, which in this case is going to be zero. We usually don't write the zero if it is zero. How about bromine? See if you can fill out this atomic symbol. Pause the video. The atomic number we get off of the periodic table, so for bromine, our atomic number is 35. That is the lower left hand side of our symbol. If we've got a mass number, we want to figure out what it is. If we have 
35 protons and 45 neutrons. This gives us a mass number of 80. And if we want to figure out the charge, if we have 35 protons minus 36 electrons, we end up with a negative one charge. If it is a one, we typically just write the sign. We don't include the number. If it is more or less than one, then the number is also included generally before the negative or positive. Let's try to complete the table. Pause the video and fill in the table. For potassium, K, we look on the periodic table, we can see that there are 19 protons. If we have 19 electrons and 19 protons, we have a charge of zero. To find the number of neutrons, it's the mass number minus the protons, which gives us 22 neutrons. So now we can write our atomic symbol. We write the elemental symbol. We have the mass number at the top and our atomic number at the bottom. Because it's neutral, we don't write the charge. We've got four, 15 protons in our second example. Our charge is zero. That tells us that we have 15 electrons. To find our mass number, we take protons plus neutrons to get a total of 31. If we have 15 protons, we can look at the periodic table and determine that this is phosphorus, which has an elemental symbol of P. To write the atomic symbol, we write 31 on top for our mass number and 15 on the bottom for our atomic number. Barium can look at the periodic table and see that we have 56 protons. We have a plus two charge, which tells us that we have two less electrons than protons for a total of 54 electrons. Our mass number, we add the protons plus the neutrons to get 137 for our mass number. Our atomic symbol is our elemental symbol. Put the mass number on top, the atomic number on the bottom, and the charge in the upper right hand corner. We write the number first and then the plus sign. If you write it the other way around, that is all right, but this is the way you will normally see it. So what are isotopes used for? Why do we care about them? Well, there's lots of uses for isotopes. So carbon, typically we find it with six neutrons, and this is what is around us in the vast majority of, of the isotopes we find as carbon-12. There's also a carbon-13 and a carbon-14. Carbon-14 is used for carbon dating. It allows us to determine how old something is if it has previously been alive. Hydrogen has three different isotopes. We've got protium with is zero neutrons, deuterium, which has one neutron, and tritium, which has two. There's lots of different applications. So if we use sodium-24, it helps us find leaks in pipelines. 
uranium you may have already heard of and that powers nuclear power plants. We can use carbon-14 for carbon dating, like I previously said. Strontium-85 is used to study life science and drug metabolism. Thallium is used in medicine to help determine damage on heart. Iodine-131, this gets used to locate brain tumors and monitor organ activity. It can also be used to treat uh, thyroid conditions. Californium-252 helps us determine the moisture content in soil. Iodine-131 is interesting because it is a radioactive isotope that actually uh, gets used to treat thyroid cancer, helps to destroy thyroid cells and eliminate them from your body. Here are three isotopes of an element. Which element is this? See if you can fill out this form. Pause the video and fill out the form. Well, this is nitrogen. The number seven refers to the number of protons or the atomic number. Thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen are the mass number. How many protons and neutrons are in the first isotope? Well, that would be the mass number, which is thirteen. How many protons and neutrons are in the second isotope? That would be 14. And in the third, there would be 15. 